Welcome to St. Peter's Lutheran Church. We're so glad you all could be with us here this morning. Thanks for joining us in worship. Uh, this is uh, Easter 2, uh, which is uh, the second, generally the second lowest attended service in uh, all of the Christian church here next to the Sunday after Christmas. But you are smashing expectations, and I want to distribute Jesus points generously across the cr so so just just know uh, whatever you need 22 today 25 28 take it take it you guys you guys have earned it anyway it is great to have you all um, I did not write down my 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 announcements which uh, puts me in danger here so uh, I, if I miss something please let me know uh, I know brick sales for the memorial garden uh, are still going on. Uh, and Randy has confirmed that they will take cash, check, uh, 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 c card. They will take whatever, whatever form of payment you have. Um, also, we have coming up, uh, uh, we have our bell choir uh, rehearsal on Wednesday night with uh, Missy McCann. Can you wave your hand real quick there? There we go. And Missy is always looking for more ringers. And again, she has, uh, she has uh, said that uh, if you know your left hand from your right hand and can count to four, she can, uh, uh, can use your skills. So um, uh, again, uh, if you want to see Missy, they're going to be ring uh, practicing on Wednesday, and they are shooting for ringing on Mother's Day. So uh, very exciting. It'll be a, a, a really good uh, 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 surprise, so we're excited about that. Uh, also on Wednesday, we have our uh, 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 confirmation middle school youth group. Uh, so anybody, 6th, 7th, and 8th graders, uh, uh, want to come and hang out, have a snack, uh, uh, learn about Jesus, and uh, play some games, all that kind of good stuff, we would love to have you. Um, in your, uh, in your uh, uh, bulletin, there is an insert that Erica put in. Uh, there is a legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Day. Uh, an event online today, and one of the uh, uh, cool things about that is, uh, I didn't realize this, uh, and, and this, is, this is bad on my part, um, is that the Senate put out why they're doing it in, in April. Uh, because, you know, you, we, we think of MLK Day generally being in January. Uh, Martin Luther King uh, Jr. was assassinated on April 4th. And so they try to celebrate it as close to uh, his, his uh, death day, which is you know, often how we celebrate martyrs in the church. Uh, so I, I thought that was uh, uh, an important uh, detail that I wanted to share with you all. Also, we continue to take in the M&M's uh, fundraiser. Uh, and if you want to throw them in the offering plate or on the uh, desk in the office, either way works. Um, let's see here. Anything that I'm missing, I, I, I feel like there's, yes, Ms. Sunday. Sunday School, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. All right, uh, Ms. Sally brought up a good point. Youth Sunday School is, is going to be done for the year. Uh, they, uh, they finished up uh, the, the week before Palm Sunday, and uh, they're, they're, they're going on summer break uh, uh, now, and they'll be back in September. However, adult uh, uh, Sunday School will be beginning next Sunday. And we'll run uh, through the fifth, and we're going to be looking at the book of Esther. And uh, it's a fantastic story. If you haven't ever read it before, uh, it's fabulous. And, and we just, uh, uh, the Jewish holiday of Purim, Purim was just, uh, uh, just celebrated. So uh, uh, that's what Esther centers around. So very, very cool. And uh, we would love to have you 9 a.m. Uh, here at church. Anything else? Oh, yes. Thank you, Karen. Sounds good. 
All right, so uh, congregational birthday uh, on, on April 21st. All right. Anything else that I've missed for the good of the order? All right, let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship with a prelude. <laughs> Please rise as you're able. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God whose rising from the empty tomb brings us to the promise of eternal life. In the presence of the living God, we confess our sin before God and one another. You're invited to sit or kneel as you are able. Holy One, we confess that we have set our minds towards things of death and not on the life that is revealed in Christ. In our fear and trembling, we quickly turn from you towards ourselves. Our fear leads us to doubt your promise, harm our neighbor, and neglect your creation. Resurrect us, O God, and bring about the new life in ourselves in our community, and in our world. Through the mercy of your beloved Son, heal us from our sin, and give us the new breath of your Spirit. Amen. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, proclaims, Do not be afraid. Know that you are washed anew. In his rising, and your sins are forgiven. Be at peace and live in the everlasting love of God.
The peace of the Lord be with you always. always Let's go and make a sign of that peace to one another. God's peace. How are you guys? grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, firstborn of the dead and wellspring of eternal life, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. And also with you. Church for the year. 
pray together the prayer of the day. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Our first reading comes from Acts chapter 4, verses 32 through 35. Now the whole group of those who believed were one of heart were of one heart and soul and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions but everything they owned was held in common with great power the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the lord jesus and great grace was upon them all there was not a needy person among them for as many as owned land or houses sold them and brought brought the proceeds of what was sold they laid it at the apostles feet and it was distributed to each as any had need this is the word of the lord Thanks be to God. Let us now read Psalm 30, 133 responsibly. How good and how pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the dew of Hermon flowing down upon the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Our second reading comes from 1 John, chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, verse 2. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, that we have seen with our eyes, that we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testified to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you may also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not know what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us as our sins, as our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. If anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning surface for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise as you're able.
gospel this morning comes to us from John, the 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who is called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. If there are any children who like to come up for a children's sermon, please do. Come on now. Good to see you guys. Come on down. Come on down. Grab a seat. Grab a seat. Come on down, ladies. How are you doing, Miss Gwen? Good to see you. Hi, Johnny. I know. Put that lip out there. That's right. All right. It is good to see you guys. I don't have a very long children's sermon for us today, uh, but I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, something that Jesus says repeatedly in there because we do it here in church. Did anybody catch that? He said something specific. Peace be with you. you. Very good, Mr. Luca. That was great listening. So so Jesus says that three times. Yeah, Raylan, what's up? Yeah, peace. That's right. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about. And and you, Adeline. That's right. All right. So what we're going to do is, so, so when do we say peace be with you in church? Anybody remember when we... When we say that, anybody remember when we say that? Yeah. Not sure? We, we wander around. It's usually in the beginning kind of point. And what do, what do we do? What do we, what do we do? We do peace to you. All right, and there's, is there different ways to do peace? Yeah, you could do you could do the peace sign. Some people shake hands. Some people hug. Some people uh, wave. Some people uh, you know point. All that kind of stuff. Does it mean hi? It means peace be with you. That's right. And yeah, it's not just saying hi to one another. All right, peace be with you is a way of saying like I hope that you are well. All right that things in your life are going well for you, that you are healthy, that you have joy, that you have people that love you, that people care about you. And that's what we're saying when, we're, when we greet somebody. So it isn't about like saying like, hey, Corey, good to see you. Glad you could make it today. It is, I am so glad that you are here, that you are well enough to be here, that you can join in, that you can sing, that you can smile, that you can draw fun pictures, all of those things. So, uh, so, so is there only one part where we can say peace be with you in our service? Uh, no, you could tell somebody all the time. You could tell somebody at school. You could tell somebody on the soccer field who, who maybe uh, you know, took a cheap shot at you. You know, peace be with you. you know, so again, peace be with you is something that you can use in your daily life as well. And again, it is letting somebody know that you hope that they are well. All right, so I have a very, a very important task for you. 
I need you to go back, and I need you to practice your peace be with ye, within ye, ye within. What? Peace be within you. I like it. All right. So, so I want you to head back and see how many people you can share the peace with between here and your seat. Remember that God loves you. I love you. They love you. Head on back to your seats. Thanks for coming up for children's sermon. Head on back. I'll see you guys. Take care. Oh, you got. Oh, nice. So uh, I, I don't know if you all noticed, but a, a little bit of my family uh, uh, snuck in this morning. And uh, I wanted to, uh, uh, they're in town. Um, I won't go into, co go into that, that, that circumstance necessarily, but I'm, I'm so thankful to have my sister, my brother-in-law, and my nephew uh, uh, here with us. And uh, no pressure. When I saw them yesterday, they said, hey, we're coming to church and we expect a good, a good sermon. <laughs> and I was like, Whew. Great. <laughs> All right. You know the about <laughs> yes, my sister. My sister said, "Absolutely, don't tell the one where I fed you dog biscuits as a small child, or held you under water, <laughs> or saved your life multiple times when you tried to drown yourself." So it goes both ways. We all we all understand this. So it's the second Sunday at Easter, right? And we hear the same story every year. Um, it's John's gospel about Jesus appearing to his disciples and he shows them his nail scarred hands and his spear pierced side. But I want to start us off in a little bit more uh, strange territory. All right. I don't know how many people have ever heard about this in Easter sermons before, but I want to go here. All right. Aliens. All right. You heard me correctly, aliens, extraterrestrials, unidentified flying objects, visitors from outer space, Martians, little green men, whatever you want to call them. Quick poll, just by raising your hand, who here definitely believes in alien life? Anybody? All right, put them down. All right, who here definitely does not believe in alien life? All right, who here is not sure about alien life? All right, good, good deal, good deal. Thank you guys for, and, 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 uh, and I'm curious if anybody is willing to share why you either do, don't, or not sure about why you believe in aliens. Just, just out of curiosity, I'm just curious. Yeah, yeah, what's going on? Because almost everything on YouTube is edited. The conspiracies are real. That's right, man. That's right. No, video evidence, you know, and all, and all that kind of stuff. Very, very good. Yes, yes. You saw a spaceship. All right, all right. You saw, yeah, yes, sir, Robert. That's, that's true. That's true. It's a big, it's a big place. And I mean, look how God, look how creative God is here just on Earth. We've got platypi. I mean, I mean, there's got to be aliens of some sort, right? What else? What else? What else? Yeah, James. All right. So uh, uh, J James is going into the very, the very scientific here is, is that it doesn't necessarily have to be a spaceship. It could be bacteria. That would be life in outer space. That's right. And I'm not looking for anything in particular. I'm just curious. Again, uh, I, I am trying to win the award for the strangest Easter sermon of all time. <laughs> yeah, Chris. There was old depictions in Rome when I was in Rome, and Leonardo da Vinci actually drew on the ceiling alien ships. Oh, yeah. Look. And there's ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics depicting spaceship-like entities. 
yeah, there, there, we, have, we have evidence in different places of like, huh, that's kind of strange. I wonder why it looks like that. And, and again, we can kind of look back and be like, maybe, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I've been asking this question for a long time in Bible studies, in youth groups, and uh, discussions at camp. And I've been doing this since I was 18 years old. Um, uh, and for about the last 30 years, my answer hasn't changed. Do aliens exist? Absolutely. All right? But just believing in something isn't the important part to me. It's why I believe in aliens that interests me and that I think ties into church. I've heard a lot of well-reasoned arguments about why aliens do or do not exist, right? I've heard the, the scientific, like what James was talking about. I've heard the, uh, the, the theological that Robert's talking about, you know, that it's big. Um, I've heard the uh, scientific, uh, you know, arguments about, uh, you know, all of those things. But none of these reasons, points, or conclusions have swayed me one way or the other. I believe that life exists outside of this earth because my parents told me that they saw it. You see, my dad was a captain in the U.S. Air Force and was stationed at a remote radar base in Northern California. And I can remember growing up, my, regular, my, my mom and my dad would tell me stories about uh, seeing unexplained objects in the sky. The base, they could see them with, their, with the naked eye as well, but the base, uh, also the radar station would pick them up on the, uh, on the radar. They'd scramble jets, and every time the object would disappear in a manner that would have been impossible for human technology. It would go from zero to Mach 6. My parents saw something and experienced an event that they could not explain, but they knew that something had happened. Now, after hearing my parents' experience, I had to make a decision. Would I believe in what they shared or not? My parents have loved, supported, cared for, encouraged, and provided, me, provided for me for over 46 years. During that time, my family has been through cancer, deaths, financial hardship, a house fire, weddings, births, baptisms, injuries, mental health crises, and more. My experiences with my parents, with their love and their care, helps me to trust in their experiences, even the aliens. And I wonder if this trust built out of relationship, shared experience, hardship, and success is what's being talked about a little bit this morning with Thomas, with Jesus and the other disciples. So you're always allowed to cheat. Uh, you can look in your, your gospel lesson. Where was Thomas uh, when the rest of the disciples got to see the risen Christ on Easter morning? Where, where was Thomas? Not with him. Not with him. All right. Which, which right now I want to make an argument for showing up for church. You never know. All right. All right. No, but, uh, but in all seriousness, we don't know where, we don't know where Thomas was. Uh, some people, their guess is that Thomas was braver than the rest of the disciples because uh, if you remember when, when they were going back to Jerusalem originally uh, to, to help Lazarus and the rest of the disciples were scared, t uh, Thomas says, let's go with him even if we have to die. All right, so I, I wonder if Thomas was out like looking for Jesus. I don't know. And yet, whatever the reason, Thomas is not present with the rest of the community when Jesus shows up on Easter. He misses out on seeing Jesus' wounds and receiving his promise and gift of peace. The rest of the disciples try to share their joy with, 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 with Thomas, right? Uh, and uh, Verse 25, it says, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas is having none of it, saying, Unless I... Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the marks of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. At first, I think we can all have sympathy for Thomas, right? It's a wild and crazy and implausible story. We know that when things die, they stay dead. 
Bodies don't just walk through locked doors. And yet, Thomas isn't hearing this story from uh, some stranger or some uh, post on the internet, all right? Thomas is hearing this from 10 of his dearest friends and colleagues who have been working together for at least three years, all right? And, and, and not only have they been working together, but they have watched over 5,000 people be fed with just a few loaves and a few fish. The disciples are the same people who experience Jesus healing people with just a touch or even a word. And they are the same group who saw Lazarus walk out of a tomb after being dead for four days. And I wonder this morning if this is where Thomas gets himself into trouble. It isn't that he doubts, all right? Because in other, in other scripture, there are stories of disciples doubting Jesus, and they never get reprimanded. Thomas does something more. He refuses to believe the community in which he has experienced God's love, power, and forgiveness so many times before. I wonder if this is what Jesus means after he finally does give Thomas what Thomas needs, which we are always reminded that Jesus meets us where we, are, where we need to be, grace upon grace upon grace upon grace. But Jesus tells Thomas, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. What if Thomas had the opportunity to be the first Christian? Stay with me here. The first Christian, the first person to believe that Jesus rose from the grave without seeing his resurrected body, to trust in the promise of Easter based on other people's experiences and not just his own. Today, you and I, we have the same opportunity to give to Thomas and the rest of the disciples. We too hear that our sins are forgiven and have the good news to share that we can declare that same forgiveness to others who might be suffering. We are invited in just a few moments to come forward, just like Thomas, and touch Jesus' body and blood and feel that Jesus is alive. To know that something happened on Easter, and it has forever altered our, our, our world forever. And yet, can we stop there? Can we stop with our own personal Easter's? Or are we compelled to share our experience with a wider community? Easter morning has come and gone, but the resurrection continues. What messages, what experiences, what stories of our risen Lord are we sharing with the Thomases in our lives? Who are the people who we know, who we love, who we trust, uh, and, and, and we have heard that story from, and then who are the people that, that know us, that love us, that trust us, that are waiting for some good news? So I want to challenge us this week. All right. Uh, you've got homework. You've got homework this week. Think of just one way, take a moment, think of just one way that Jesus has impacted, changed, improved uh, your personal life. Think about it. Just one. You got it? All right. Now, I want you to think of just one person that needs to hear that story. On the last page in your bulletin, all right, on the last page of the bulletin, it's the tear-off page. It has, like, all the uh, 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 announcements on it. I want you to write that person's name on that. Tear it off. Take it home with you. Hang it up on your fridge. Put it next to Put it someplace where you will see it. And commit to sharing your Easter story with them. Not why they should believe, but why you believe. Not why it will make their lives better, but why it has made your life better. 
my parents, a long time ago, shared their UFO experience with me. I appreciate that they never told me what to believe, just what they had seen and experienced. And that was enough to change my life. Might the same be true for the person that you know who missed out on Easter so far? That person who is desperate for a resurrection in their own lives. Who will you tell? What will be their response? Let's go and find out. Thanks be to God and amen. amen. We continue by confessing our common faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, was suffered under death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to ju judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. 
who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You're invited to sit or kneel as you are able to for the prayers of intercession. Confident that the resurrection of Christ has defeated sin and death, we now offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all the people in need. Let us pray together. Your church cries out, O God, and you listen. Just as you drew near to the disciples, we ask that you will draw near to us today. <clears throat> Breathe into us the Holy Spirit, that our faith may be renewed, and we witness to your love. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Your creation cries out, O God, and you listen. This morning we pray for our trees, our crops, wildflowers, all growing things. We ask you to guide our farmers and gardeners and those who tend the soil and nurture plants into new life. We cry out on behalf of places where there is drought and we ask that you would rescue those places, including the lands of Zimbabwe, Malawi, Zambia, Angola, Botswana, and Madagascar. In addition, we cry out that you will give us ears to hear their need and hearts to respond. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your world cries out, O oh God, and you listen. We pray for the world's police, firefighters, paramedics, and other first responders. Please guide them to work for the well-being of their communities and for the dignity of every person. We cry out that they will do this so that no one needs to live in fear. <coughs> we also lift up soldiers and aid workers and pray for their safe return to their families and loved ones. Specifically, we ask that you watch over Logan, Tyler, and Caden, and any others we know who are serving. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your children cry out, O oh God, and you listen. We know you hear us crying out for justice, crying for an end to racism and other oppression, crying out for a world where all are fed and safe. Thank you for hearing. Thank you for listening. We pray for those who cry out in suffering, sickness, grief, or pain including Laura, Bridget, Josh, Pamela and David, Alice, Raymond, Patty, Joan, Nick and Ginny, Ridley, Patty and Carol, Ed, Mark, Will II, Marge and Sam and Beth, Tammy and Bill, Kathy and Charlie, Louise, Troy and Danielle, Brad and Megan, Cheryl and John, Patrick, Robbie, Elliot, Jennifer, Charlie, the family of Linda Hellman, and those who we now name out loud or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We, your congregation here, cry out, O Lord, and you listen. You have led us in many ways, from times of doubt to times of strength in our faith. Thank you for the story of Thomas, for the truths that are found there. Give us the courage, we pray, to share our Jesus experiences this week and beyond. Embolden us to share bravely, trusting that you are the one who changes hearts. We will be your message, Lord, and we trust that you will share your love through us. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your abundant mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. A brief note about, uh, uh, just wanted to share, you might have seen some cards out on the table. Uh, that's something new that we're going to try for uh, name tag Sundays. So the first Sunday of the month, we're going to send a few cards out to folks in our congregation 
uh, that might be going through a difficult time. So if you did not get a chance to sign on the way in, please uh, take an opportunity on the way out. At this point, we have the opportunity to uh, give and receive of the offering. We give because God first gave to us. We give to, re to support God's work in this place. We give to remind ourselves to put our trust in God alone. At this time, let us offer our gifts to God. Please rise. We are reminded that this is the Lord's table. He is the host and we are his guests. He welcomes everyone to come, eat, be fed, and forgiven. Come, eat, and live. The only people excluded from our communion table are those that Jesus himself would exclude, and that is no one. All are welcome. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. seated. Will the communion assistants please come forward? A brief note about communion. Uh, I will not be serving today. As you can hear a little bit, I'm a, I'm a little under the weather and uh, I'm on the tail end of something, some sinus thing, uh, but I just want to make sure I don't share with any of y'all, so we'll be good on that. And uh, uh, come on down, Ms. Diane. And uh, uh, so if you are new, uh, if you're visiting, uh, whatever, uh, our ushers will release you uh, by row to come on up. Uh, and you, if you want wine, you're going to get one of these uh, empty uh, little glasses. If you want grape juice, get one of the self-contained ones. There are also gluten-free in there. Uh, if you would prefer just a blessing from the minister, 
uh, you can uh, cross your arms over your chest. All are welcome.
Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of resurrecting power, the Christ of ending, unending joy, and the spirit of Easter, hope bless you now and always. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.